This is a long script, so there are not going to be any pictures to go along with it, just audio. People have brought this up many times independently before, but with how tied together this is, I'm going to talk about it in conjunction with one another. Should tanks and healers DPS? Many people have made it clear that they think these two roles should not, but I want to look at where this comes from. There seems to be two origins for this thinking. One, it is how Y game works, so it is how X game should work. This is not a good line of thought because it ignores X and Y are different games. If this player truly wishes for a game that plays like Y, they need to go back to playing that game, not try to convert this game. Two, the I don't want to have to play like that, or you don't pay my sub, but let's spoil it down to the base here. These are the lazy players and the only solution is to ignore them. They have no place in content with even moderate difficulty. So, these people want to make it so healers and tanks can only heal and tank respectively. In that case, this is a balancing issue. And as with all balancing issues, you have to look at them in terms of endgame. Only when everything is used optimally can you see any sort of balance issue. You do not look at a random bloke 248 who can barely face roll his keyboard and think, Oh, his performance means I need to buff what job he's playing. You look at the very top of the player base and see that one or multiple jobs cannot perform to the same degree as others. Even though I'm firmly against making tanks and healers only tank and heal, I'm going to take a look at what can be done to make this standard. To force tanks and healers into not DPSing, we have to make it impossible for them to DPS. We are not allowed to nerf or remove anything, so that means no removing Broil or Felcleave. What we are left with is increasing outgoing damage from bosses, to the point that constant healing and tank stance are needed just to survive. The way things currently operate with low burn and moderate spikes, there is nothing in the game that will straight up kill you through a cooldown as a tank. If we increase the low burn damage, such as auto attacks from bosses, we have to increase it to such a degree that it alone is a threat to the tank's life. However, we also have to increase the frequency that it happens so that the tank is never at max HP before a tank buster. Tank busters would also have to be increased, otherwise we still have tanks eating them with just a cooldown and no stance, but we have a problem with that. If the tank busters are few and far between, then when we know those are coming, the tank can eat it with no stance and just hollowed home or living. People like to think of these as oh shit buttons, but they are really there to absorb scripted damage. If Square Enix did not want them used in this manner, then they need to make it impossible to use them in this manner. But let's get to healing. With how strong healing is within Final Fantasy XIV, just healing the tank is not going to be enough to take every global cooldown that healers have. And that is the goal, to make healer DPS impossible. The best way to remedy this would be to increase unavoidable raid damage so that the healers must also heal the rest of the group. This has the side effect of creating HP checks for everyone and possibly gear gating everything. Gear gating never feels good because it does not matter how good of a player you are, your gear is what matters. Now, after we've increased all the damage to the point that tanks and healers can only tank and heal, let's take a look at what this causes. We made it so that just to survive, a tank and healer have to use all their abilities. You have to be optimal to live. Where does this leave those that are not optimal? Well, they're dead. We just killed those that are for this tanks and healers only tank and healing bullshit. The people that optimize are still top, but the people that do not optimize are more heavily punished now. This has not even dealt with all four people this affects in the 8-man content yet. We made the current tank forced to be as defensive as possible to live, and made tank incoming damage, as well as unavoidable raid damage, so high both healers have to spend all their global cooldowns healing. But what about the second tank? Unless we make mechanics that specifically target them constantly, and do so much damage that tank stance is required, that second tank is nothing more than a DPS. If we do make those new mechanics though, then we run into a problem of tank stinks being needed for both tanks. 
and then they are stepping on each other's toes with base actions due to enmity mods on stances. If we leave it alone, the second tank just performs as a DPS and their defensive cooldowns are useless, but we want to force the use of all of those. So we would have to make it so that tank swaps are forced and in a manner that would make swapping back before all those cooldowns are used is impossible. A debuff that lasts for something like 2 minutes, that when hit by the boss again results in death would accomplish this. But what happens if something goes wrong, the tank currently getting hit dies, then the boss turns the other tank and one shots him. Do not forget we raised outgoing damage so much that tank stance is required, meaning now the boss is running around one shotting everyone else as well since they do not have the stats to live. This does not sound very good for gameplay. We force tanks and healers to only tank and heal, but it makes the game boring, like World of Warcraft, where one of the keys to survival is a passive stance and the healers hitting 2-4 to four buttons back to back. That is not very engaging gameplay. In doing this we made gameplay really boring, inactive, and simple. We also made it impossible for those that do not optimize to survive, so the very people that want this have shot themselves in the foot. How things currently are is a lot better than doing this. Whether people like it or not, DPSing as tanks and healers is optimal. The instance where it would not be optimal would mean far less people are capable of clearing content. I do not understand why anyone would want turtling as a baseline strategy for Final Fantasy XIV. That is boring, but people somehow want to say things being based on DPS is boring? That is not true. Things being based on DPS means that they are based on how well you play that job ignoring resist down debuffs and raid buffs. I feel like a lot of this junk could be alleviated with a little transparency from Square Enix. They need to tell the truth. Tanks and healers are DPS with different cooldowns. While I'm on it, I might as well state this. There's no reason for parsers to not be in this game. The argument against parsers is always, but people will harass others. But in the current situation, the ones that will harass others already have the tools to do so. If someone harasses someone, make the definition of harassment crystal clear and ban those that do it. A parser is a tool to improve oneself and figure out where things are going wrong. PlayStation 4 users do not have access to this and have to contact others for information regarding this. In the event of contacting someone through in-game chat, all parties are putting themselves at risk for being reported. If you're one of those people who do not want to see their numbers because it hurts your feelings, seeing your bubble burst that you are not playing well, then tough luck, your feelings do not matter. If Yoshi P really wants to raise the lowest portion of the player base, then he needs to tell the truth, that all jobs in this game are DPS and give them the tools to improve themselves. I'll probably be called elitist for this video. But I honestly do not care if you want to optimize or not. Be as bad a player as you want to be. You do you. Just do not try to lie to everyone and say that your clearly deficient way of doing things is the best way. And understand that hard content is not meant for you.